Hi everyone, this is Steve Tatarunas, Technical Support Manager at Listen Inc. And today I'm going to demonstrate to you the waveform windowing example sequence. And in order to run this sequence on your end, you're going to need SoundCheck 18. We recommend that you have the SoundCheck Plus package. And you're also going to need the Time Selective Response module, part number 2006, because this sequence uses a continuous log sweep and that requires TSR analysis. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to run the sequence up to its first display step and there's a natural pause built into the sequence at that point. So uh, let me do that and then I'll give you some background on the sequence itself. So I wrote this sequence to help a customer out with a measurement challenge they were having. And what they were trying to do was measure the directivity of a hearing aid like device. And in order to do that, they were mounting the device on a head and torso simulator, which was also mounted on a turntable. And then they were making measurements at regular um, increments, 10 degrees, I believe. And the customer provided me with three waveforms, which I'm recalling into the sequence here. So this example sequence just uses recall data. There is no acquisition step. So there's a zero degree recorded time waveform, another one at 90, and another at 180. And we can see a couple of distinct details in each one of these waveforms. So this one here that is occurring around 10 milliseconds is actually leakage into the hat's ear. And this more dominant signature down around 50 milliseconds is actually the amplified signal coming out of the device. So there's uh, about 30 some odd milliseconds of latency uh, during the signal processing inside of the device. And we can see that as the device starts rotating past zero degrees, the magnitude of the amplified sound starts to decrease relative to the leakage. And so by the time we get out to 180 degrees, the leakage magnitude is actually greater than the amplified magnitude. And that was tricking the auto delay function in analysis. So if we look over in the three tables here, these are the record delay values for the three waveforms. So zero degrees and 90 degrees are very similar. But now when we get out to 180 degrees, it's way off and that was causing some errors in the fundamental analysis over here. Now you might look at these values 38 milliseconds and 2 milliseconds and then look over at the waveform graphs here and say hey this doesn't look like it's starting at 38 milliseconds so let me just take one second to show you the stimulus waveform here and because it's a uh, continuous log sweep, the first couple of cycles are going to be very, very long. So if you look at this and then look at the waveform graph up here, it pretty much makes sense that we're saying that the waveform starts at about 38 milliseconds. So auto delay is working, just might not be so obvious uh, the way these, this data is displayed. So this was the challenge. What could we do to help the customer get accurate measurements at every degree of rotation. And what we came up with was windowing the waveform so we could just completely exclude the leakage from the analysis waveform. So what we did was take a windowing post-processing step. We placed the three recorded time waveforms into a group and we use that group as operand A in the windowing post-processing step. And we applied a search range of 30 milliseconds to 110 milliseconds. So let's continue the sequence on to the next display and we'll show you what happens there. So now all of our waveforms are windowed. There's no longer a trace of any of that leakage, and all we have is the amplified signal. So now if we come over and we look at the record delay values, yeah, sure, they've changed a bit because the waveforms themselves have been edited, but they're all very consistent. So in the end, we have a lot greater confidence in our analysis and 
in the end the directivity results are going to be a lot more accurate. So windowing can be a very useful function. There's another good example of it in your soundcheck installation in the sequences folder in the subfolder for microphone example sequences and that one is called open loop microphone. And that's actually a little bit more automated than what we're doing here because it actually takes a closer look at the waveform and through a series of post-processing steps it identifies the beginning of the recording of the stimulus and the end of the recording and windows it automatically so it makes life a little bit easier. And one more thing to add is that windowing isn't just for time domain signals you can also window frequency domain signals. And a perfect example of that would be attempting to splice a near field and a far field measurement together. So for example, you might want to look at the near field from 20 hertz up to 300 hertz. So you'd window it to those frequencies and then you could take your far field measurement and window that from 300 hertz up to its high frequency endpoint. And then you could splice the two together using a post-processing step using the A plus B axis option. So I hope you learned a little bit about windowing here today, and maybe it's given you some ideas about how you could use it with your own work. So thank you for watching, and if you have any questions, feel free to contact us at support at listeninc.com.